Uh, so, is there any way we can create like some general rules or, or heuristics for how machine vision and machine learning systems like these should be used or employed? Again, I'm no expert in machine learning. Uh, I'm just some poor civil engineer trying to make sense of all this uh, in this crazy world that we're in now. So um, I'm just approaching this from the perspective of someone with a general engineering and technical background. What I want is I want rules that I can keep in the back of my mind that I can use to judge uh, future proposed applications of this technology when I come across it. And I can think of three good rules that I could uh, that I can use to judge these systems. Um, you know, let me know what you think of these rules. But I think these are three good uh, heuristics that might be uh, useful when judging applications of machine learning and machine vision. Uh, first of all, these systems are best used for applications where a certain failure rate is acceptable, and where failure will not result in in harm to a human being. If one out of a hundred or one out of a thousand pieces of lumber on a line are misgraded, well, it's not great, but that is something we can plan for. You know, especially if it makes the resulting lumber cheaper, it might be worth it. Um, as an engineer, I can plan for that. Uh, even if this error rate is a bit higher than what a human error rate is, I, as a structural engineer, can still compensate for that by using a slightly higher factor of safety. Um, you know, the standard deviation on my probabilistic estimate for the strength of a piece of lumber will increase slightly, you know, so we change our calculations a bit and take them into account, and really no one is harmed. We just bake the uh, slightly increased uncertainty into our estimates. And even then, human graders will have a certain amount of error as well. Your goal might not be to eliminate all errors entirely, but just to make sure your, you know, lumber grading system has an error rate that is lower than that of the average human grader. So again, first rule, these systems are best used for applications where a certain failure rate is acceptable and where failure will not result in harm to a human being. Um, second, I think I'll borrow uh, one from the military. Now, the Air Force has a rule for its drone, uh, for its, uh, drone systems, and that rule you may have heard before is to always keep a human in the loop. And what does this mean? Well, if they're sending a drone into a war zone, they make sure that a human being always gives the final order to fire a weapon. Um, now, these things don't, aren't necessarily always completely autonomous. They might let the drone uh, fly itself into a combat zone, maybe even take itself off, if, you know, from the ground if it's if, it, if it's good enough. Uh, they might use a machine vision system to uh, identify a target and track it. You know, they might tell it, hey, there's this vehicle that we're interested in following. Follow it as it moves across the landscape, that kind of thing. They might leave that to the automated system. But they have a firm rule of uh, always keeping a human in the loop. In other words, ultimately, a human being has to be the one th to pull the proverbial trigger. They have this idea that only a human being should take the life of another human being. So why do they do this? Well, not only does this provide a, a final safety check, but provides accountability. And really, that's perhaps the best uh, reason for having that. Um, it's quite possible that, you know, humans are not infallible. You know, you might actually be able to have a system that has a lower rate of error than a human does. The real value, perhaps, of keeping a human in the loop is that you provide accountability. The worst possible outcome is that a, that a machine fires a weapon, a horrible mistake is made, and that no one is held accountable because everyone just shrugs and blames it on the computer. The idea of having a human in the loop, part of it is just to make sure that only a human makes that decision, and part of it is just to make sure that there is uh, someone you can hold accountable. Now, as an aside, I do not have any personal experience to know if the Air Force really does hold itself to the standard in all cases. Now, for all I know, it's just propaganda, but Regardless of whether the Air Force actually holds itself up to its slogans, I think it's a good heuristic uh, for our use of machine learning. If machine learning algorithm ever puts the health, safety, or welfare of a human being at risk, that system should be incapable of independent action uh, without approval of a human being. Keep a human being in the loop. A machine of any kind should not be making a decision by itself that can directly harm the health, safety, or welfare of a human being. Uh, third, if you are building a machine vision or other machine learning systems, you need to publish your methods. Specifically, you need to publish your tra training and verification data. Uh, if you are developing a system that, in that is interacting with human beings, you need to include with your final product information on just what subset of human beings you have verified your product on. People need to be able to know uh, when your tool or system has any validity or when it doesn't. Again. On all of these systems, garbage in, garbage out. If you only train them on some subset of humanity, 
they will that system is only going to work for that subset of humanity that you trained your system on so if you're going to use this kind of system you need to publish that you need to tell people this is the kind of people i tested this on only use it with those type of people so these systems ultimately cannot be applied to all human beings in all circumstances. There is no way you're going to test your system or train it on literally every human being in existence. There's always, but just by sheer practicality, there's always going to be some limit on who you can train and test it on. But do not tell your customers or the public that this, whatever you're developing, can be used in all circumstances. These systems always work in a limited range of circumstances, and you need to publish what that range is. For example, does your eye tracking software only work for people with two functional eyes that aren't crying in brightly lit rooms? Well, you need to tell potential customers that. Is your facial recognition system incredibly racially biased and you insist on selling it anyway? Well, fine, I guess if you really want to sell a racist facial recognition system, I guess, but put a giant sticker on the side of it that says, this tool should only be used to identify light-skinned criminal suspects. If you simply insist on selling your racist facial recognition system, I mean, hopefully nobody buys it, but at least they can have the warning in advance. Um, these systems will always have limitations, and you, as the engineer designing them, have an ethical and moral responsibility to educate the public and your customers on exactly what those limitations are. Obviously, you might not want to do this. Uh, you know, you might have trouble selling a, a facial recognition system that has a big sticker on the box that says this algorithm is not useful for identifying dark skinned suspects. But, you know, if you just can't figure out a way to eliminate the racial bias from your algorithm and you're not willing to publish such a warning with your software, then you should simply delete that thing and forget it ever existed. Never release it. You are the one creating this tool. You have the responsibility for your creation. You are the one who has the ethical and moral obligation to ensure that it, that it is used responsibly and only within the range of its applicability. So I think these will be my recommendations for these systems going forward. First, these systems are best used where human health, safety, and welfare are not at risk. Second, if a machine learning system is used in such a case, a human absolutely needs to be kept in the loop. Third, the human in that loop needs to be fully aware of the limitations of the system in question, which means you, as the creator of that system, need to publish detailed information on the data set used to train and test whatever newfangled AI tool you have developed. If you are unable or unwilling to do these things, it is irresponsible and unethical to unleash these machines upon the public.